connect my GNS3 topology to physical devices such as routers and switches or servers? And how do you connect into your GNS3 topology from a physical network? In other words, how do you connect out of GNS3 and how do you connect back into GNS3 from a physical network? As an example, you may want to exchange OSPF routes between your GNS3 routers and your physical routers, or simply Telnet or SSH into your GNS3 topology. Now, the simplest way to get a GNS3 to talk to the physical network is to use the NAT device. However, the NAT device allows connections out of GNS3, but doesn't allow connections back into GNS3. So if you simply want to give your GNS3 topology internet access, the NAT device is the device to use. But if you want to connect your GNS3 topology to physical devices and then have your physical devices connect back into GNS3, or you want to Telnet or SSH into GNS3, you need to use the cloud device. In this example, I'm using GNS3 version 2.0.3. I've already peed to a Windows PC. So this is a physical Windows device and I've installed GNS3 on this Windows 7 PC. I've got both the GNS3 GUI as well as the GNS3 VM installed and integrated. Warning. Warning. Now here's a really important warning. Don't try and do this on a wireless interface. In other words, don't use a Wi-Fi interface on your laptop to try and do what I'm doing here. There are many problems using wireless interfaces to bridge GNS3 in the way that I'm demonstrating it here. So I've warned you, if you do decide to bridge GNS3 to your wireless network card, it may work or it may not work. That's a hardware limitation on wireless network cards and has nothing to do with GNS3. So if you do have issues using wireless cards, it's most likely the wireless network interface card in your laptop that's either restricting traffic or causing problems. In this example, I'm using a USB gigabit ethernet network card in this PC. I'm not using the built-in ethernet card. I'm using a USB ethernet card. There's a physical problem unrelated to GNS3 with this network interface card. So I've simply used a USB to Ethernet adapter, and that's what I'm using to connect to this PC. And is also the interface that I'll use to bridge GNS3 to the physical network. So if you are using a laptop and it only has a wireless interface card, consider buying a USB to Ethernet network adapter and using that in your laptop for these labs. So in this topology, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag two 3725 routers to the GNS3 topology. These routers are running on the GNS3 VM. It's also recommended that if you're going to bridge GNS3 to the physical network, that you use the GNS3 VM. So there are my two GNS3 routers. These are 3725 routers. Which are now booting up. So there's router two, and there's router one. Now, before we add the cloud to the GNS3 topology, you need to add a network adapter to your GNS3 VM. So I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to add a new network adapter. Because I want to allow the physical network to access the GNS3 network, I'm going to bridge this connection and click Finish. So notice I have three network adapters. I've got Host Only, NAT, and Bridged, which I've just added to the GNS3 VM. VMware restarts the GNS3 VM. And once again, I now have three network adapters connected to the GNS3 VM. This is again the recommended way of configuring bridging between GNS3 and your physical network. 
I'm going to drag a cloud to the GNS3 topology and I'm going to run it on the GNS3 VM. That again is the recommendation. I'm going to connect router one to the cloud and notice I'm going to connect it to the third Ethernet adapter, ETH2. ETH2 is the third network adapter. GNS3 counts this as Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1, and Ethernet 2. So now that that's been done, let's configure the routers. So on router 1, show IP interface brief. All interfaces are shut down. I'll go into the Fast Ethernet 01 interface and no shut it and configure it for DHCP. Interfaces come up. Notice an IP address has been assigned through DHCP. So show IP interface brief. The IP address allocated is 192.168.10.4. Show IP route shows us the routing table. The router has a default route to 192.168.10.249. That is the gateway of last resort. So can I ping google.com? Notice I get unrecognized host or address. And that's because I need to enable IP domain lookup. Ping google.com again. It's trying to resolve to 8.8.8.8. That's Google DNS. It's now resolved and the ping succeeds. So this router can ping google.com. I'll start a new session here and I'll SSH to the default gateway, which is 192.168.10.249. Please note that I'm doing the SSH from my Windows PC and not from GNS3. So I'm going to log in as David and enter my password. This is a physical Cisco 1941 router in my local topology. It's got a bunch of IP addresses on it, including this IP address. This PC is in VLAN 10 and hence GNS3 is in VLAN 10, and this is the default gateway. So at the moment, if I type do show IP OSPF neighbor, there are no neighbor relationships because OSPF is not running on this router, but I'll enable OSPF on all interfaces in area zero. So show IP OSPF interface brief, OSPF is now running on Fast Ethernet 01. My physical Cisco router is only running OSPF on Gigabit 00. In other words, on this network. This is on VLAN 1. It's not running OSPF on VLAN 10. So router OSPF 1, network 192.168.10.0. Area zero. So notice on GNS3, we now have a new neighbor relationship. Show IP OSPF neighbor. We have a neighbor relationship to 192.168.56.249. That is one of the IP addresses on the physical Cisco router. Notice the neighbor IP address is 192.168.10.249, which is the VLAN 10 IP address on the physical. Cisco router. So show IP OSPF neighbor on Cisco. We now have a neighbor relationship to 192.168.10.4. This is the GNS3 router. So show IP route. Notice the GNS3 router has learnt about various networks through OSPF, including 192.168.56. something. So as an example, if we ping this address, that's one of the IP addresses on the Cisco physical router, and that succeeds. So again, show IP interface brief. On the GNS3 router, this is the IP address of 
the Juno 3 router. I'll open up a new PuTTY window and telnet in this example to this IP address. We told that password is required but none is set. We'll just make that a bit bigger. So notice we can't log in to the router. We need to create an enable password or privilege password. And we need to enable VTY passwords. So I'll duplicate the session. And notice we can log in and view the GNS3 router. This is a 3725 router. Just to make the point, I'll change the host name to GNS3 router1. And notice through the Telnet session, the GNS3 router name has changed. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.